Good morning and welcome everyone. To those that are visiting here with us today, we do want you to know that it's indeed an honor that you chose to worship here with us. We here at TRC, we are praying church and we do believe in the power of prayer. Located on the wall on the back, there are prayer request cards, so please feel free to complete those and place them in the box. Thank you. This morning we, we uh, want to read from Philippians uh, chapter 4, starting in verse 4. That'll be uh, Andrew's text uh, for, for the message uh, he's going to deliver later on. So, Philippians chapter 4. Verse, starting in verse 4. Always be joy, uh, full of joy in the Lord. I say it again. Rejoice. Let everyone see that you are considerate in all you do. Remember, the Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. <coughs> Tell God what you need and thank Him for what He's done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and praiseworthy. Keep putting into practice all you learned and received from me. Everything you heard from me and saw me doing. Then the God of peace will be with you. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for the way in which you bless your people. Thank, the, thank you that uh, we have peace with you, our creator of the universe, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you that you satisfy the deepest needs of our hearts. Lord, help us to be good stewards of everything you entrust to us. May we always be generous, especially to the poor and needy. Help us to always be forgiving of those who treat us badly. Lord, we praise you for your greatness and your acts of love and power. We worship you as the creator of the entire universe. Yet you know and love each one of us personally. Lord, help us to understand it's all about Jesus. It's always been about Jesus. And it always will be about Jesus. Help us to focus our lives, our thoughts, our actions, and our everything on Jesus. And Lord, thank you as we look towards this new year ahead and all the potential challenges, opportunities, possibilities, knowing that we're the safest place is in your hands. In his name, amen. This year belongs to our Lord Jesus. Amen, that's right. And we come together in this communion to remember that he is Lord of Lords right. and King of Kings. Mm -hmm. And we have a covenant with him, a covenant, a relationship, a special bond between us. That says, yes, Lord, you indeed are the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Servers, if you'll find a place. The Lord's Supper, the bread, the fruit of the vine, no matter what your background is, Jesus Christ loves you. It was Jesus Christ who said, eat and drink in remembrance of me. Jesus Christ prayed that all of us will be one in him according to the Holy Scriptures. John 17th chapter and the 21st verse. It was God the Father who has sent Jesus Christ. It was Jesus who was the resurrection and the life. Let us pray and give thanks. Let us bow our heads. Father, we thank you for all your goodness, for your amazing grace, for Jesus Christ. We thank you for all our brothers and sisters. The Bible says one day we will see each other in heaven. 
surrounded by your glory Hallelujah. with the holy angels. We just praise God. And in this, in this name we pray. And amen. amen. I hope each of you do have a happy new year. We had a, a good year last year. I appreciate each of you so much. We got to celebrate our 100th anniversary as a church. I think that's pretty neat. How's it feel to be 101? <laughs> really, I never thought I'd be at a church that was over 100 years old. Uh, so it's kind of neat. It's a good feeling. But it's a good feeling because of each of you. And sometimes I don't know that uh, we always stop and think about that. Relationships are important, and the relationships that we have as a people is very good, and I'm glad to be a part, and I'm glad that we can share life together, and especially as we start this new year together. I want to take you on a journey for a moment in, in this new year as we think about the new year. Jonathan, what an excellent job of choosing songs. Amen. Uh, you know, just kind of those times you're touched by words of song, newer songs, older songs, a blend of songs, so many thoughts, so many memories. Uh, I thought it was going to be okay until Jonathan led the last song, uh, Higher Ground. Uh, you don't realize how old that song is, but uh, I grew up, it's one of the first songs that, uh, that I remember singing as a little boy growing up, and it was due to the the Irish song leader that we had, and what a unique man that he was. So he got me going there, and then the newer songs that maybe you're not familiar with have such meaning and such wonderful richness about them and where it takes us as you sing those songs and as you let them become a part of your mind and of your heart. So it's a good way to start this year. And let me take you now on that journey as we look at some scripture together for a few moments. I want to take you to one of the most powerful passages in all of Scripture. God loved us, and while we were still yet sinners, Christ died for us. I don't know a more touching passage than that to realize that, that even though we are sinners, there was nothing, no contract made there was no statement made, well, if you'll act a certain way, then Jesus will save you. No, Jesus came to save us before any of us ever repented. He laid down his life. He shed his blood. He arose from the grave so that we could be saved. And nothing was asked. It's just Jesus so loving us that he gave himself. And so when I think of great passages, I think of a passage like this that reminds me of how wonderful our God is, how wonderful our Creator is, and how wonderful He is as our parent, bringing us into this world, making us in His own image, creating us. We make all these fancy distinctions and separations. And God looks at all of us and says, I created you. Right. Right. you got to love that. And that God so loves us that he wants no one to ever perish. He wants us all to be saved. Right. And so before any of us could do anything, Jesus, Jesus died to take away our sins. Thank you, Lord. God determined before we were born that our sins right. would be removed. So what does it come down to? Look what else that Paul has to say to us, especially as we start this new year. In Christ, we are new people. We have an, a new year is about a new beginning. We, we celebrate, uh, some of you, not too many of us anymore, stay up all you know, past midnight. Most of us fall asleep by 8 o'clock. But uh, you start the new year and you celebrate. You, you get a new beginning. Christ gives us all a new beginning. He creates us and makes us new by what he's done for us. And as he does that, the past is forgotten. 
The sins are remembered no more. I, I can't say that enough to us as a people. We got people that like to, to uh, do such picturesque sayings in our mind about standing at the judgment day and having a big television screen up here that reports our whole life. No. No. Our God not only removes our sins, he remembers them no more. He has a delete key that no one can undo. And when you come to our God and, and that forgiveness is given to you, you are forgiven. Every day we live life and we wish we could do different things every day. Sometimes we look and say, I wish I hadn't done it that way. And sometimes we cry out as a man of old of the New Testament cried out, God be merciful to me a sinner. And understand that in that mercy, God forgets our sins. Right. He does not remember them. And someday when we stand face to face, someday when, John, that song, you know, Jesus is our heaven. I don't remember the word that was written there exactly as it was put in the song. But you realize to be able to see Jesus face to face, to be able to, to look into the eyes of the one who said, I will take away your sins. What an astonishing moment that will be. I know a lot of times we want to talk about heaven, about the street of gold and the mansions, and nothing wrong with doing that. But I think the greatest of all events, beyond my imagination, is to see my Lord face to face. I know how Thomas must have felt to, to fall before the Lord and say, my God, my Lord. Oh, what an awesome moment it will be. The past is forgotten. Everything is new in Christ. And every day is like that for us. For every day we are a forgiven people. A forgiven people of knowing that God is continually taking away our sins. Amen. And as the Apostle John once said, that we are cleansed by the blood of our Lord Jesus. Yes. First John chapter 1, if you want to know where that passage is. And he doesn't use the past tense there. The words that he's spoken is a word that, that we would have to classify in our English language as one that means a continuation. You see, we are continually cleansed of our sin by what Jesus has done for us. Paul turns to the church in, in Philippi and makes them a unique comments to them he says to them I haven't yet reached the gold well I thought you were saved I am says Paul but I haven't reached the gold yet I'm not perfect yet I'm the chief of sinners he will say in another instance it's understanding that in this life and in this world that we travel that we're not perfect but something's happened, and that is that we have allowed Christ to take hold of us. Right. We have allowed Christ to surround us by his love, his mercy, and his grace. We have allowed Christ to hold us through all that we face in life. So we keep pursuing. We keep pursuing what is good and right in life. In the next two verses, Paul explains this a little bit more. And he, at this time, he turns and he says, look, we haven't arrived. Don't you guys remember, most of you are, are parents in this group. Some of you are grandparents and some of you are great-grandparents. And if you're like Joe, you're great, 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 great. No, I'm just teasing <laughs> Joe. But you think back and you remember those moments. I can remember sitting in the old DeSoto growing up in the back seat saying, Dad, when are we going to be there? You know, you think about that. We haven't arrived yet. When are we going to be there? Well, it will come. It will come. The promise is there for us. But one of the things we need to do is don't keep looking back. It's one of the greatest challenges faced in any church at all. Is people want to go back to their past sins. They want to go back and say, I remember. And they want to live in that. 
And it brings up guilt. It brings up struggle. It brings up difficulties in life. Don't look back. God's already removed the sin. And he's punched in the delete key. And those sins no longer exist. Keep in mind, we spend too much time looking back. We spend up too much time trying to think, oh man, I wish I hadn't done that. That's okay. God's forgiven. You've turned to him. You're sitting here today. You came. You came to worship the God who says, I am removing your sins. That's right. Thank you, Lord. So whatever you did before you got here this morning, and in your attitude of forgiveness, understand God has removed that sin. Yes. It's so beautiful when we take communion. Every once in a while somebody says to me, and no one said that in, in, in a long time to me, which I'm so glad. But throughout 50 plus years of preaching, I've had people say, well, I can't take communion. I've, I've just been too bad this year or this week or this day or whatever. And I'm thinking, it isn't about the past. It's about remembering that Jesus is the one who so loves you. Yeah. That he died to take away your sins Hallelujah. before you were born. Hallelujah. That's right. What a beautiful blessing that we have in Jesus. Yes. It isn't about what you did or didn't do. It's about honoring the one who says, I will make you new. Amen. I will give you something special. So we keep moving forward. We keep moving forward. What do we do as a 101 year old church? Many things that we could do. We can look back to the past. Yesterday I noticed an email had come in and I hadn't gotten around to looking at all the emails that had come in over the last few days since we'd been gone. And so I was going through a whole bunch of emails and I noticed one from a name that I recognized. It's the son of a former preacher that was here in the late 70s. He's telling us that his dad had died. We can go back and remember. But we never want to go back and stay there. It's about moving forward. It's about going forward. For there is coming a day in which we will look up and see our Lord returning. And you're not going to find that in the past. That day is to come. We keep moving forward. We keep moving toward reaching the prize. And the prize is something beyond our imagination. I started with the thought of the song that Jonathan introduced today about Jesus is our heaven. You see, the prize is being face to face with my Lord Jesus. The prize is being there in presence with Jesus. All the other beauty of heaven is great, but nothing will surpass of being able to see my Lord. That's right. was so right. And I look forward to that Amen. day. We have a prize to come. Yes. A prize of an eternal relationship and an eternal time with the one who makes it all possible. And that's Jesus. I love that. I love that thought. I love the thought of what all that is about. But a question comes up. How do I keep this focus how do I keep this focus on Jesus as Jake mentioned about Jesus as Jonathan in the introduction that he gave us talks about Jesus it's all about Jesus how do we keep that focus there Paul goes to the next chapter chapter 4 and he says think on whatever is true think on whatever is pure think on whatever is right think on what is holy think on what is a friendly I don't, it, it, some of your translations will have a different terminology there. But I, I like that term, and you'll see why in just a moment. I want to come back to it. Think on what's proper. Hey, don't stop thinking about what is truly worthwhile and worthy of praise. I've right. got to challenge us. You're living in a society that, the Bible study that I do on Sunday morning with the group that I have, we were talking about the changes that have taken place. You're filled with changes. Jake said a moment ago, he said, now don't, 
Don't let Robin know that I've told you this story. Well, she's already got a text. It's already on Facebook. It's already on Instant Messenger. <laughs> so Jake, Jake, well, he, he'll be looking around for somebody to put him up for the night. No, I'm just... But you got my point there. You understand we live in a moment where everything is thrown out there anymore. And so often we don't think about it. Christianity is about thinking. Christianity is not just about having an emotion of a relationship, a loving relationship with the Lord. It's also about thoughts. It's about thinking. It's about reasoning. It's about taking a moment of not living in the midst of the crowd or a mob. It's about being able to think about what is good and right in life. So whatever is true, think about it. I, I, I can't, anymore, it just seems like that I cut myself off from so much of that, that information is out there. Because I go through and I look at that information and say, that is totally wrong. <laughs> and I've done that for years. Remember back in the late 60s, there was a, a thing that came out about that one of the greatest atheists of all time was going to get a bill passed to stop all religious broadcasting. Well, being the person that I am, I picked up the phone and called the state senator at the time, called my rep in Congress at the time, and said, I'm going to give you a bill number. Does it exist? Both their offices responded, it doesn't even exist. No such thing exists. There's information that floats around there constantly that is not true. As a Christian, we think about what is good and right and pure and so often what you see that comes to you is not pure it's evil it, it produces wrong in life it doesn't produce a right information out there that does not produce a friendly environment is never correct now you're going to have to mull that one over but you see Jesus said there are two great commandments you love God with all your heart, your mind, and your soul. And then he says, you know, the second's just like that. Right. You love others as you love yourself. Uh, you see, loving others is about how you love self. I don't want to leave a bad taste in someone's mouth. It's about loving someone and making a difference in their life and lifting them up. And helping them to carry on. Yesterday I, I did a memorial service for a lady. I felt so sorrowful for her. Three months ago. I did a service. For her oldest son. Yesterday I did a service for her younger son. And she's alone in life. And you stand there, what, are, what could you say? One thing I could say to her was, let me give you a hug and tell you I love you. We need to care enough to be about being friendly with people. We don't need enemies in life. We need to maintain friendships and to do what is proper in life. And so when you look at a statement like this, bottom line is Christianity as Jesus envisioned it, calls us to think. Not just think about anything, but think about what is good and right and lifts up and encourages and provides guidance to people so that they can live life to its fullest, so that they can enjoy life and touch a life and make a difference in a life. You see, when we talk about what Paul wrote, it's being reminded, let's be thinkers. Let's be thinkers. Anyone can follow the mob. Anyone can follow the crowd. Anyone can get on Facebook and say anything they want. Anybody can text out anything they want. But a Christian will text out what is good and right and pure and encouraging and uplifting. And that's the difference that we live by. That's why we're the light of the world. We're the very salt of the earth. For that's what Jesus calls us to be. 
And so as we live in this new year, I want us to be thinkers. How do we do something? How do we think through it? How do we make sure that we're encouraging? How can we lift up? Do you think worship came about today because, you know, we walked in and, uh, hey, William, what'd you put on the computer? Well, Jonathan, why don't you follow this? And, hey, I think I'll do that. No. Prayer, thought, study. That's right. Nothing happens by accident. It's important for us to think through what we're doing and to be a light to the world that we live in. Would you bow with me in prayer? Father, we bow our heads. We humble ourselves in your presence. Yes, Lord. And God, I, I guess, and I, I assume all that feel the same way I do today, I never felt that I deserved to be saved. But what I know is that you love me. Thank you, God. And you've loved each one here. Yes. And you have provided forgiveness. Forgiveness before we were even born. For your desire is that we be saved. Hallelujah. Help us, O oh God, to think about what is good and right in life. Yes. Yes. Let us think before we take actions. Yes. Let us never follow a mob of evil, but let us always do what is good and right yes. so that we honor you and we bring others to be our friends. For we need to be a people of love. So God, as we do this 101st year, use us, encourage us, guide us, wash our sins away, hold your arms around us so that we feel your presence and know that 24-7 we're always in your presence, that we're never out of your presence, for you have so loved us that you're saving us in Jesus. In his name, amen.